following lecture was produced by Glorian Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Let us make Adam. Or let us make the man which relates to the sixth day of Genesis. As you see in the graphic of the file that we place there in the website, we find a quotation from the Iliad, written by Homer. You might wonder why is uh, uh, the Iliad of Homer uh, combined with the verses of the Bible. And we explain that it is because the Iliad and the Odyssey were books that were included in the original Bible. As long as many other books that uh, right now we don't find in the ordinary Bibles that we uh, buy in the market. Uh, originals of that Bible are found in Washington, in London, and in the Vatican. So of course, we find here in this graphic the goddess Tetis, which is a narrated, or we will say the symbol of the Divine Mother related with water, which in the Bible is called Ela Yam, the goddess of the sea, or the sea goddess. If you observe uh, the name of the goddess Tetis has uh, within the letter Tet or the Hebrew alphabet that relates to the nine sephira, the nine arcanum. And of course, uh, is, which is uh, related with the rune, is related to the Divine Mother which also is the very beginning of the word Israel that we find in the Bible. Since, as you know, uh, the different languages that exist in the world are derived from the ancient alphabet. The study yet, maybe... Well, we have a problem there with the static, I believe. Uh, so,
Okay, so the letter tet, as you know, relates with the Sefir Ayesod or the Tree of Life, and which is also related to the Divine Mother. That's why we place there the graphic of Zeus with Tetis. And uh, the quotation of the Iliad, where she is asking uh, permission from Zeus in order to act in favor of Achilles, her son. Achilles, of course, a Greek warrior related with uh, Greek mythology, relates uh, uh, his. Uh, life story with the same uh, developing of the man within each one of us. Remember that uh, Dante Alighieri found the spear of Achilles in the ninth year when he was descending into hell. The spear of Achilles is the symbol of the phallus. Man. And of course, everything is related with Het, which is the uh, Hebrew letter that symbolizes the serpent. Remember that the serpent, the tempting serpent of Eden, and also the serpent of brass that was killing the Israelites in the wilderness, are the symbol of the two polarities the same force, which is a sexual force, and which is the force of Eve. That's why the word Tetis is really a name of a goddess that relates in the Greek uh, mythology to many uh, tasks that Initius has to perform. And uh, uh, likewise, if you see in the very bottom of the graphic, we wrote in Hebrew, let us make Adam, which is precisely the words that uh, are spelled uh, in the Bible, in the original Bible in Hebrew. Remember that we address also the Hebrew letters because uh, the Old Testament, the Tanakh, is written with Hebrew letters. And in the Hebrew letters, we find the mystery of the Hebrew language with highest wisdom. And when we learn it, we discover many mysteries that we explain always in relation with Kabbalah and with the Tree of Life. For instance, the first word, since Hebrew is written from right to left, that you find uh, in the bottom, and let us make at letter Nun is read Asa, which means make, perform, action. The same letter we use in order to, uh, to name the fourth world of Kabbalah, which is Asia. So the world of Asia is Malkut, the physical world. That's why in Kabbalah, when we read, uh, let us make Adam, in Hebrew, we find the word na ne asa, which relates directly with the world of Malkut, which is the physical body, or the physical world. That implies that the one that is asking for the making of uh, the man, Adam, is the seventh sephira of the seven lower sephiroth of the tree of life. 
if you examine the tree of life, you find that at the very bottom is Malkut. And uh, the world of Malkut relate to the world of Asia. We say the world of action and matter. Matter is a Latin word also related to mother. And we always state that Malkut is a feminine sephira, the very bottom of the tree of life. Above it, you find the other worlds that we always refer and talk in many lectures. The world of formation, which is related to the next uh, three sephiroth above Malkut, which is, or which are, Yesod, Hod, and Netzach. Those three sephiroth relate to the world of formation, which in Hebrew is Yetzirah. Above it, we find Tifereth, Geburah, and Hesed, which are related to the world of creation. Bria, as we said in Hebrew. And on top, we have Keter, Chokma, Bina, the three higher sephiroth related to the world of God, the Logos, the world of splendor, which is called uh, Atziluth, where we find the divine elements in action. So that is precisely what we quant, uh, we always say, Atziluth archetypes, Geburah creation, Yetzirah formation, and in the very bottom, Malkut, action. So let us make Adam means let us work here in Malkut, which is the seventh sephirot related with the true man. Because in Kabbalah, we name the true man from Chesed, which is the spirit. That is the true man, which is called in the Bible the Ruach Elohim. So Chesed. Gebura is the divine soul. Tiferet, the human soul. Netzach, the mind. Hod, emotion. Yesod, the vital body, the superior aspect of the life of the physical body, and in the very bottom, the physical body. Those are the seven sephiroth that are related with the seven days of creation that we had to study and that we are studying in many lectures. So if we count the seven sephiroth from the top, beginning with Chesed, we arrive at the seventh, which is Malkut, which is called the seventh day. So when we talk about the seventh day, we talk about the relationship of the sixth sephira, which is Yasad which relates to the sixth day and the seven to Malkut. That's why when we talk about the creation of the human being, which is the Bible called Adam, that implies the activity of Malkut and Yesad. And this is how we are going to study it in relation with uh, with the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. In the second graphic, you find, again, Zeus, but this time with Era. We place now Era there because in the Bible, there is always a, re a reference to two types of waters. The second day of Genesis states, let us make a firmament between the waters and let us separate the superior waters from the inferior waters. 
So then you find there are two types of waters that uh, you find in the Bible. The superior waters is what uh, we call Shamayim, or heaven. And the inferior Mayim are related with the goddess Tethys that we are referring here. So we place here the superior waters, Era, and again the word Elayim, in order to point that is also the sea goddess, but from the superior waters that also interfere in the making of the man. Because Zeus related also in, and is the root of the word Jesus, or the chief of the gods, or the angels that enter into the activity. And it is precisely the female aspect of divinity that says, let us make Adam in our image after our likeness. You see, our means two, no one. And let them is referring to Adam, which is androgynous. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That was stated in the sixth day. Previously, we find there the five days in which all creation is made from above. So when that creation is made, then the Divine Mother, Kundalini, Era, Isis, is asking now the Holy Spirit, which is the masculine aspect of God in creation. Let us now make the man in the physical world. Or in other words, let us now crystallize everything that we created in the superior dimensions. Let us now crystallize in the inferior dimension, in the human being, in order for him to become the microcosmos from the macrocosmos. And all of that implies, of course, a great activity of the superior aspect of God and the inferior aspect. For instance, in Gnosticism, we find that there are many apocrypha that refer to the demiurgos in Greek, and with what we call in uh, English demiurge which is that part of God that has activity in this physical world. The Demiurgus is that activity of the Elohim, of the angels, in this will of Samsara, in which we are, which is the physical world. And it's precisely here, if we want to understand this from the, this aspect, is that the Murgus, which is base is feminine, asking to the gay cosmo creators, let us now make Adam, the man, into our image, into our likeness, which we find, of course, in the superior worlds. So, in the third graphic, we find the Rossi Cross with the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, which resembles, which in Hebrew is called Shushana or Shushan. What does this word mean? Shushan or Shushana means lily or rose. So when we read the Son of Sons of Solomon or the Chants of Solomon in the Bible, in the verse 1 and 2, 
of the second chapter, because there's only eight chapters of that uh, beautiful poem of Solomon, it is written, I am the rose of Sharon. This is how it is translated. But of course, he says, I am the Shoshana of Sharon. But Sharon means also chanting, a son. When we read Kabbalistically, we find myself. No, I am, <clears throat> no, I am as an, an ego, but myself, my inner being. This is what he's saying here. Because when, when Solomon talks, Solomon is Hesed, the spirit. So that's why we translate it as myself, my true self, the chanting rose. The lily of the valleys. So, myself is the chanting rose, the lily of the valleys. The two words, rose and lily, are translated in Hebrew as Shushana, or Shushan, which is a word that has two shins, the letter that symbolizes fire. It's beautiful. So, as a Shushana among thorns, so is my love between children. It's another Kabbalistic statement here in which we find that children in Hebrew is written or is a word that uh, implies masculine and feminine because ben in Hebrew means sons or son and Beth is daughter but the word that we find in the Bible is Benot Benot which is translated as daughters but Kabbalistically we see there the word Ben and the word Beth which means daughter and son. So the plural, since is related with Malkut, is children, which means masculine and feminine. And this is something that we have to understand because that Shoshana, or that leaf, that lily that we see there, symbolizing the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, with which the Bible is written. There you find why it says, Myself is a chanting rose. That chant, that song is written in the Old Testament. Because with those two, 22 letters, is how the whole Bible is written Kabbalistically and saying something symbolically that we need to see. That only by studying Kabbalah we can understand. And that's why we always insist in that any Gnostic student should memorize the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, which relates to the 22 arcana of the Tarot, or the Torah, the law, in order to understand the message which is written in the Bible and the Old Testament. And in order to understand the messages that we receive in the internal world. One time, in the internal worlds, I received this experience in which I saw a master making a house and utilizing, instead of bricks, the letters of the Hebrew alphabet, building a house a temple with them. That of course implies a very profound symbol in order to us to understand how to build the house, how to build Adam. Because that let us make Adam doesn't imply 
just physically. Because all of us are already made, created physically. But remember that the man is the microcosmos of the macrocosmos. So we have to reflect. That's why I said, according to our image, according to our likeness, we have to reflect Elohim within us. And this is precisely what uh, we have to explain here, because that is the point. We have to be born again, is what Master Jesus said. This to be born again is a matter of let us make Adam into our own image, into our own likeness. A long process. It's not a matter of believing what is written in the Bible but of doing and making, as we said, asa, asya. Utilizing the forces that we have in the physical body in order to create that human being within each one of us into the image of God. So, as the lily among thorns, so is my love between children. Those children are, of course, men and women. Husband and wife. They have to be like children in order to enter into the kingdom of esotericism, which Master Jesus called the kingdom of heaven, which, in other words, is the worlds of Kabbalah, which are above Malkut, the physical world. So, why are we talking about the lily and the uh, rose? Let us read the next quotation of Luke, chapter 12, verses 27 and 28. In order for us to understand what we are explaining here. Master Jesus says, Consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they speak not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. He's mentioned here Solomon. And remember that the son of sons are of Solomon, where he mentions the lily. And of course, he says, If then God so cloth the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he cloth you, O ye of little faith? So, Master Jesus here is comparing us to the lilies, to the Shushana. Hmm? He's not saying only women, but men and women here. But it's not talking to the physical body, it's talking to the soul. Because we have to dress our soul with the solar bodies. And this is precisely what uh, this great uh, King Solomon explains in verses in the Son of Sons in a Kabbalistic manner. Let us see, for instance, what the Sohar, which is the spirit of the doctrine of Moses, explains. Moses, the one that delivered the Pentateuch, the five books of the Old Testament, taught three aspects of his doctrine. The first is called the physical aspect of the doctrine, which is called Asya, Malkut, and which is written in the Bible. You read the Bible, you find the physical aspect of the doctrine. But if you want to know what is hidden within that doctrine? 
you have to study the spirit of the doctrine. And that spirit of the doctrine is called Zohar. In which we find the explanation of what we talk here in many lectures about Shushana, the lily. So let us read what the Zohar explains about this Shoshana, or this rose or lily. States, as a Shoshana among the thorns, this word Shoshana, what does it mean and symbolize? It symbolizes the cluster of archetypes named Israel. This is what the Zohar explains. And as Shoshana among the thorns is either red or white in color, so the initiates of Kabbalah are affected by the qualities of judgment and mercy. Just as a Shoshana has 13 petals, so the cluster of archetypes named Israel is surrounded by the 13 attributes of mercy or 13 heavens. This, of course, deserves an explanation, and we had to go into the tree of life in order to understand it, because otherwise we cannot understand. The Zohar says that the Shoshana is the same Israel. So he's comparing this rose or this lily with Israel. But explains that the Israel is a cluster of archetypes. Or as is also said, community of archetypes. We have always to emphasize that because if you read literally, you will say Oh, it's the people of Israel. No. When we talk about the archetype, we talk about all of those elements that relate to that rose that we have within. All the archetypes. So, Tifereth, as we explained in many lectures, is where we find Israel. Because in Kabbalah, we know that Hesed, Geburah, and Tifereth are related to the three patriarchs. The first is Abraham, Hesed, Isaac, Geburah, and Jacob, Tifereth. Those are the three patriarchs of the Hebrews. And Jacob, which is Tifereth, is the Bodhisattva, or the vehicle, of the angel Israel. And when we refer to Israel, we refer to all the parts of Jacob. How many children had Jacob? Twelve. That refer to the twelve parts of this beautiful rose that we are talking here. But if we place, of course, that rose in Tifereth, we are placing that in our heart. Why in our heart? Because remember that the heart has the blood. And in Hebrew, blood is dalet mem. Dam. That is how you say blood in Hebrew. And the blood in the heart is connected to the lungs. Where we find the oxygen which in Kabbalah is symbolized by the letter Aleph. So the letter Aleph, oxygen, connected to the blood, Dam, makes the word Adam. That's why when we refer to Adam, the human being, into the image of God, we directly point Tifereth, which is Israel. So the Zohar says that that Shoshana, or that rose, or that lily, is the same Israel. 
but refer, of course, to those archetypes which are clustered in the heart, in the blood. And that we, we don't know that, we lose the connection and the way in which we have to work with. So, if you observe around Tifereth, which is the first Sephira in this case, where we play the rose, the Shoshana, the lily, that's the first one. And then around, we find the 13 or the rest of the 12 petals that the Sohar is talking about. The 10 Sephiroth, and above the 10 Sephiroth, we have the three aspects of the Absolute, which are called Ain, Ain Sof, and Ain Sof Or. Those make 13 heavens, or 13 petals of these attributes, which refer says 13 attributes to mercy. Now, mercy is called chesed. But keter is called the mercy of mercies. Because when we refer to our inner being, we talk about Chesed, which is our innermost, our spirit, but which is nothing but an emanation of Keter, which is called the Father in the Tree of Life. Because in the Tree of Life we find Keter, Chokmah, Bina, which in Christianity are called the Holy Trinity, or Triunity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So the Father is Keter. She's a mercy of mercies. In other words, if he said our own spirit reflects mercy in heaven, above him is Kater, which is the mercy of mercies, which is has more mercy than any. But he has, according to the Sohar, 13 curls of hair. This is what you read in Zohar when explaining about Keter, which is called Serampin, or the big man, Adam Katmon. Those 13 curls that are related to Keter are related to the 13 Sephiroth because he is the head of the 10 Sephiroth, which are forming the tree of life of all the attributes of God. And above him, in order to make the 13 curls of hair, he has the three attributes of the absolute. So he reflects in himself the three aspects of the unknowable divine and the ten aspects of the noble divine. In uh, the addition, is 13. So, of course, in other words, that rose is surrounded by the light of lights, by the father of all the lights, by the father of all the archetypes, which is Keter. This is how we understand it and how we, we comprehend it. Therefore, when we talk about Israel, we imagine that rose, that Shoshana, with all the 22 letters surrounded by the 13 attributes, which are the 13 Sephiroth in the tree of life, because that Shoshana is in the center, because that Shoshana is the same Israel which is in Tifereth, which is the human soul. Therefore, these 13 leaves 
of the Shoshana and the degrees of mercy surrounded the archetypes of Israel, Tiferet, correspond to the 13 words between the first and second mention of the name Elohim mentioned in Genesis. If you take a, a Hebrew Bible, between the first word, which is named that, in the beginning, Elohim. Between this Elohim and the other Elohim, which is named in the book of Genesis that says, and the Ruach Elohim was floating above the waters. Between that Elohim and the first Elohim, there are 13 words. The Zohar says, this is a symbol of the 13 words between those two Elohims, which are, uh, are related to those lights that we are talking about in relation with our heart. Attributes that we have within. That means, of course, that the Ruach Elohim that was hovering above the face of the waters, which are, we always explain, are the sexual waters, in order for him to act, because that Elohim is chesed, our own spirit, has to be in connection with the first Elohim, which is, of course, the father of all the lights. Because remember that the Bible says, in the beginning, Elohim. Or Bereshit, Bera Elohim. And this is precisely what we find here in the graphic that we place there of the first words of the Bible. Bereshit Bera Elohim at Shamim et at Ve'at haaretz. And we place there an image of the Hindu pantheon, which explains the same thing, but graphically. Because Barashit means the daughter of my head. And in many lectures we explained that the feminine aspect of the holy name of God is the Ein Saf. That Ein Saf is the daughter of my head, which is the feminine aspect of the unknowable divine, from which Father, Son, and Holy Spirit emanate. And you see there, again, a lily. Or what do you find in, in the Hindu pantheon called lotus flower, or a lily of a flower. In the middle you find the three uh, aspects of the Hindu trinity, which is Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. Or, as we said in Christianity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, in other words, this is what we call the Holy Tetragrammaton. yod he vav he The four lettered name of God. So, all of us, in our depth, have this feminine aspect, which is called the Ein Sof, from which the Trinity emanates. But all of us, inside, Kabbalistically speaking, have that trinity within. That's why when we talk about uh, the three aspects of God within, we always refer our Brahma. Brahma is on the left side, as you see, of the hands of that uh, Shakti of that goddess of the space, of the sea goddess, which in Greek is called Era. So here you find that Brahma 
is always represented with four phases. Now let me explain to you why Brahma in Hinduism is represented with four phases. Because four is always related to the holy tetragrammaton, or the four aspects that our particular individual God has, because everyone has those aspects within. First, if we add, if we say that Brahma is our own spirit, we don't make a mistake because in Hebrew, this Brahma is called Abraham. Same. Same words, same, same letters. So this Abraham, this Brahma, is our own particular individual spirit that emanated from the Holy Trinity. As we said, our own particular individual spirit, God or angel, is an emanation of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's why Brahma is represented with four phases. Because in us, that uh, innermost is connected to the three aspects, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in our own particular individual monad. But if we refer Brahma as Keter, the mercy of mercies, which is the top of the tree of life, then we arrive at the conclusion that that Brahma, related to Keter, represents three aspects of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three. But since this Keter emanated from the Ein Sof, that's why he also has Four phases. So behold here the four phases of Keter and the four phases of Chesed. So the four phases of Keter, Brahma, Ket, the first aspect of the Trinity, reflect the Trinity itself plus the Ein Sof, from which the Trinity emanated. And this is why when we refer to Brahma, sometimes we refer to Keter, sometimes we refer to Chesed, our own innermost. But we had to know how to place the forces, Kabbalistically. It's not that our innermost has four faces. It's just an, a symbol in order to, for us to understand. Understand that. Because God itself has no form but is the outcome of forces. And this is how Brahma is underst understandable, understood in other words. Now, Vishnu, which is the second aspect, represents the multiplicity of the unity. Vishnu is the sun, S-O-N. And as Vishnu is within Brahma, as Vishnu is within the Ain Sof and beyond. It's a part which is universal. That's why when we talk about Vishnu, which in Christianity is called Christ, the Son, S-O-N, we do not place it, but in different places. Not in one place, but in different. Because Vishnu in us is the same Vishnu in you, in Jesus. That Christ is the same one in the depth of every one of us. Many rays of light, which symbolize one light. And this is only possible to understand and comprehend when we experience that. And that Shoshana is connected to it. This is how we have to see Christ, universal, 
connected to our own Brahma, but connected to the whole universe. And then Shiva, in the right, which is the Holy Spirit in Christianity. Shiva is individual in each one of us. If you concentrate in your own divinity, you can talk with your own particular Shiva, your own particular Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit is individual in each one of us. This is what we have to understand and comprehend. What the Holy Trinity is. And we have explained that in many lectures, but now we are synthesizing that you can ask questions later in order to emphasize more of this, what we explain here and what is written here in this graphic. The daughter of my head created these in the sea because the word Aleph Lamed He, which compound the word Elohim, means separated. Ela o Eloa, which means goddess. And the word Yod Mem, Yam, means sea. Also means the west, which is Malkut. And also, the word Ela could say it also El, which means these, referring, of course, to the archetypes. So when we say these, we are talking about these aspects of the Holy Trinity, these archetypes related with Israel, which are all the lights. All the forces of what we call God within each one of us. That's why it is explained here. Created this with the names. The names, of course, are made with the letters. That's why in synthesis we always state that the war at, that is found in Genesis, are the symbol or the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet and the last, Aleph and Tav, which encompasses the whole alphabet of Kabbalah, the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the 22 leaves of the rose of Sharon, the Shoshana. So, if you observe why Aleph is the first, because Ain begins with Aleph. Ain Sof, and Ain Sof Aur begins with A. The, the word light in Hebrew, Or, is Aur, which is that, the beginning. But that beginning, as you see, is on novo, in the abstract, absolute space. That's why the word creation that comes from the abstract into the concrete doesn't begin with Aleph, but begins with Bet, which is the second letter. Bereshit is the first word in Hebrew. That Bereshit means many things, has many symbols that we explain in many lectures. Bereshith. Why with Bet? Because it's a created world. Because the unknowable is Aleph. That's why the letter Aleph is silent. Means no sound, no physical sound. But it implies, enters into the activity. And the last letter, Tav, is the last letter of Malkut which is the very bottom. And also, Tlipoth, if you want to add hell in it, because in the last synthesis, everything that exists, exists because of the absolute, even hell. 
Coclipoth, the world of shells, empty shells, empty of, the, the, of that which is divine, ends with Tav, letter Tav, Clipoth. Now you see why this word at is very significant and important when we find it in the Bible. That's why it says at implies the Shoshana, the 22 letters in heaven or in the names in heaven. Shamayim, because Shamayim means heaven and also means the names. Hashamin, the names in masculine plural. Shem is plural. And of course, those archetypes, as we explain here, also with the names and with the earth in the physical body. That means that the, all the archetypes of God, which are above in heaven, are also here in our own physicality. In our own physical body. But in potentiality, not in activity. So every single person in the world has the 22 archetypes of that Shoshana in potentiality. And that's why the Divine Mother in Malkut, in Asia, says to the superior archetypes, let us make Adam, because the archetypes are here. As we made, said the goddess, the superior dimensions and all the hosts of angels above, let us now make with the archetypes that are in this physical body of men and women, let us make the microcosmos, the reflection of all of that. And that's why it's a state. And let them be. Let them means men and women, the two polarities. Let them be the kings and queens of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle on the earth, and that creeping creature that creepeth on the earth. That means to dominate nature. Between parentheses, dominate nature, not pollute nature. Understand that. Because only the intellectual animal, call Adam, call human being by mistake, Pollute nature. The true Adam, the true man into the image of God, is a king of nature. Control the forces, never pollute them. That's why we have to learn how to be that Adam into the image of God. Or as Jesus says, to be born again. Let us now go into the Shoshana again. Or what is called the Rossi Cross. Remember that in many lectures we explained that the letter Aleph, which is in the very center, relates to Keter, the father. And that the letter Shin relates to Chokmah, the son, S O N. And the letter Mem referred to the Holy Spirit. So we have here the three primary colors, blue, red, and yellow, from where all the colors emanate. That's why these three primary letters, called also mother letters, relates to the law of the Triyamatsikamno, the law that creates the Holy Trinity. And that is what we call the world of God, the three primary forces, the divine forces, the three letters that represent Aleph, air, Shin, fire, and Mem, water. Those are the three elements that relate to the earth. 
We are the earth. We are Asia, Malkut. So, in Hebrew, when the, in the sixth uh, uh, or in the seventh day is where Elohim is making Eve from Adam. Or in other words, is separating, separating Adam from Eve because Adam was androgynous, but then took Eve out of Adam and Adam became masculine and Eve became feminine, separated in sexes. But in the beginning, they were in one body. So this man in one body is called Ish in Hebrew. You find in the Bible that the word Adam referred, of course, to that creature that is being made from the power of the blood and the oxygen in us, which is in the heart and in the lungs, and that through them descend into the sexual organs. Let us read what the Sohar says about this. It says, Thereafter, the divine name Elohim is mentioned again, and why? In order to show the symbolic meaning of the five strong leaves which surround the Shoshana, the occult meaning of which has, refer has reference to the five ways of salvation, corresponding to five gates of mercy. Regarding this mystery of five, it is written, The cup of salvation I lift up, and the name of Jehovah I utter. That is in the Psalm 116, verse 13. Of course, they say, This cup of blessing in which must stand or repose upon five fingers only, is similar to the Shushana, supported and sustained by five strong leaves, or five Hebrew letters. Because in order to write Shushana in Hebrew, you find it with five letters. So that five letters symbolizes what you find here in the very center of this Shushana, this rosy cross. One, two, three, four, five leaves in the very center. This is how you uh, write Shoshana. Shin, Vav, letter Nun, and letter He at the end. Shin, Vav, Shin, Nun, He. Shoshana. Five letters of the Hebrew alphabet. which represents the five leaves in the center of the cross. The cross, of course, is what we in Christianity call in Latin, ingri, ignis, natura, renovator, integra. The fire renews nature incessantly. That's the meaning of that mantra. Ingri. And also refers to the four letters of the name of God, Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. That's why that Shoshana, or that five leaves of the rose, are surrounded on the very center of the cross, which are four aspects, symbolic, and that is our heart. So, when you write the letter Shin, and the letter Aleph, the beginning with Aleph and Shin, this is how you spell fire in Hebrew, Esh. But if you want to say men, male in Hebrew, you just add the letter Yod in between the letter Aleph and the letter Shin. And then you form the word Ish. Ish is a man. 
But why in the Bible is written Ish and not Adam? When God was separating Eve from Adam, Adam said, addressing Eve, Now she is flesh of my flesh and bones of my bones. She shall be called now Isha. Doesn't say she will call herself Eve. That's another aspect in other verses. Isha. And in order to say Isha in Hebrew, you just add the letter He at the end, which means woman. Isha. Because Ish is man. Because it is, she is called Isha because she was taken from Ish. From Ish, it doesn't say from Adam. So here we hold the mystery of the fire that we are talking right now. Because the mystery of this Ish Rael is the mystery of the fire, the archetypes in our heart that we had to deal with. Observe the three primary letters in the very center of this rose. Rosary cross. And uh, comprehend why the letter Yod is the first letter of the holy name of God. The holy name of God is Yod, He, Vav, He. Why is Yod the first? Because Yod is the first spot, Yod is like a flame. That appears from the unknowable divine. From that what we call the ends of or the light. The first spot is just a little flame that symbolizes the letter Yod. And that's why the letter Yod in the Hebrew alphabet is the number 10. Because it symbolizes the ten sephiroth. But also Keter, which is symbolized by the letter Yod, is also symbolized by the letter Aleph. Because the letter Aleph contains three Yods. Because Aleph is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that aspect of the absolute, which is also three. That's why when we refer to Keter, we say Aleph. But we understand that within that Aleph is the letter Yod. But in other Kabbalist books, like for instance in the Yetzirah, book of Yetzirah, book of formation, it says that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is also represented by Shin. And the letter Shin has also three yods on top. And that letter Shin symbolizes fire. That's why in Hebrew, Aleph and Shin together make or spell the word fire, Esh. And that's why the name man spell Shin. I mean, Aleph, Yod, Shin. Because that trinity in the heart and that trinity in heaven is united to our own particular flame, that Yod, Ish. So Ish is in relation with fire, and Isha with the fire too. But listen here. If you add the letter Yod in between the three primary letters, the three mother letters, Aleph, Shin, and Mem, if you add the letter Yod in between, 
and then you form the word Ishim. Ishim. Yod here and another Yod here. Between Shin and Aleph, Yod. Between Aleph and Mem, Yod. Ishim. What this word Ishim means? Means souls of fire. Or it's also translated as human beings. In Malkut. When you study Kabbalah, you find that the word Ishim refers to Malkut. The very bottom of the tree of life. So this Ishim are those that contain the Holy Trinity within themselves as fire. And that's why when we talk about Ishim, we are naming Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in creation. The three primary forces. Or the masters that are self-realized are Ishim. The children of the fire. Ishim, the Holy Trinity. And that's why it was written in the book of Genesis that Eve was taken from Ish, not from Adam. Adam said, this woman is now called Isha because she was taken out of Ish, which is, of course, God, the Holy Trinity. And by adding the letter Yod to the Holy Trinity, we find then the Holy Tetragrammaton. So now, you find that around the three petals, where we find the three mother letters, we find the seven double letters. Double letters are called in Kabbalah, which are Bet, Dalet, Gimel, Kap, Tav, Pe, and Resh. Those are the seven. Why are they called double? Because when they are pronounced in Hebrew, have double ways of pronouncing them. But Kabbalistically, it's called, they are called double because refer to the seven spirits which are in front of the throne of God according to the book of Revelation. Or seven cosmo creators that relates to the three primary forces because when we talk about the three, the law of three, we talk about the holy triamatsikamno, the law that creates. But that law that creates is related to the seven cosmo creators of this Shoshana or Rosy Cross. So, if we take into account that the three primary forces, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, relate to each one of the seven cosmo creators which in Hebrew are named of course uh, also we find here uh, the image that we put about these seven cosmo creators from William Blake which is a drop of semen where we find these seven forces and three angels in the left, three angels in the right, and in the center, our inner monad that represents that ray to which we are connected. Because in the art depth, our own particular spirit is connected to one of the seven. And that's why the elder, which is in the center, represents our own innermost, and that particular ray to which our own spirits belong to. Which Master Jesus said in the Bible, 
Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That Father in heaven relates to the Holy Trinity, relates to the law of seven. It's our inner most. Relates to the seven petals around the Holy Trinity in the Shoshana. It will make the multiplication of the three primary forces by the seven cosmo creators. How much do we have? 21. Isn't it? 3 by 7, 21. But since they are double letters, that means that we have to double that 21. So how much we have? 42, isn't it? How are you in mathematics? So now let us read what the Suhar says in order to understand that, that we are explaining here. It says, uh, The third and fourth Elohim mentioned in the book of Genesis, one of the words which are in between those Elohim is the word Aur. Remember that it's written, and Elohim said, let there be light. So after that are five words, and there was light. And Elohim said, between the, that the other Elohim, so the word Aur is the main point here in these verses of the book of Genesis. Sohar states, This light was processed and became enclosed as an embryo, seed, in other words, a sperm or ovum, in the sexual organ, which is called berith, of that word Bereshit, Berith, related with the circumcision in the Hebrew or Judaism religion, which is the covenant. And as that entered into Malkut, which is our own physicality, but through the Shoshana, which is in our heart. Visualize that. The letter Aleph, which represents the Holy Trinity, purifying the blood, which is Dam. Adam in the heart, which is Israel, which is the Shoshana. That light, which we are explaining here, that comes from the ends of Or, descends and enters into our physicality through our own particular inner must which is connected to the seven cosmo creators. Enter as a principle of life, made it fruitful. And this is the physical body, which is called in scripture, fruit tree yielding fruit whose seed is in itself. This is what the physical body is, I repeat. The physical body of each one of us is a fruit tree yielding fruit whose seed is in itself. That seed is precisely where we have the archetypes descending from the blood into our own sexual glands. They are deposited there. And as this life principle enters into the sexual organ, cast itself to become manifested into 42 kinds of second matter. 42 kinds of second matter. So as it produced the semaphorash, the great and ineffable divine name of God composed of 42 letters, which operates in the creation of the world. 
42 letters. And another scripture says that there is another name of God with 72 letters, which is more another meaning. But here, let us stay here. 42 letters. This is what the Zohar says. Shem Afrash, the holy name of God, it says. How do you find those names, 42 names of God? The number 42 implies the variety of forces related with the seven spirits before the throne of God within which each one of us are of course connected to our own innermost. It's coming into my mind the book of Revelation states and I saw the lamb with seven horns and seven eyes. And the seven spirits of God before the Lamb. The number seven is really very interesting here. But the Lamb of God represents Christ, as we know, which is light, which is fire. It's not a person. Because the Ram, which is the Lamb, is a symbol of Arius. And Arius is a symbol of fire. So therefore we find that that lamb in us represents the three primary forces in our three brains. Our intellectual brain, our emotional brain, and our sexual, instinctual, sexual brain. Those are the three primary forces related to the three primary letters. Aleph, Shin, and Mem. Air in the head, fire in the heart, and water, mem, in the sex. And those three primary forces are the ones that we have to control in order to create, because the law of three creates, but creates to the seven. That's why we had to develop in our spinal medulla the seven chakras, or the seven shoshanas, lilies, that had to sprout in us in order for us to have an access to the internal world. That's why it is written that we have to put in activity those flowers in us. The flower that the book of Genesis mentioned appears in the third day. Three days, which refers to the astral body. And that's why Master Samael Onvior emphasized the necessity of putting into activity the seven roses, the seven lotus flowers, the seven lilies. Because each one of these seven chakras or seven lilies relate to the seven spirits of God that have to be active in order to create with the law of three, which are related to our three brains. So that's why Matthew Samael in one of his books advises in order to put into activity the seven chakras, we have to combine the sound of the five vowels to put in activity these chakras in our physical, in our astral body, because they are astral senses or spiritual senses that awake and put us into in contact with the internal body. Now, uh, in Hebrew language, the letter het is similar to the letter he, with the difference that the letter he has a gap on the top, but the letter het doesn't have the, the gap, only an opening in the bottom. He is with a gap, and het is without a gap. Het 
is pronounced <laughs> and he is pronounced like a sigh. That's why Master Samael and other masters like Krumuel states, het means to speech, to talk. You want to put into activity the word in your chakras, vocalize. He is because the S put in activity the fire. His holes has pay attention because when you read that mantra, his has horse whose has is written with C H. That's how the letter het is translated into English. C H, and you read his. If you read the word C H as ch, you will say chis. Hmm? But no, when you read the mantra his in in the uh, English Latin letters, C H I S. But you read it his, not chis. Chis eat with bread. But here you said his, his, hos, whose, has, you see, the power of the word, the sound of the speech, because the letter het means to speak. <laughs> the power comes from the throat. So by pronouncing his, you put an activity the chakra of clairvoyance. You send the power of the throat, the sound of the word to the first Shoshana, which opens your clairvoyance. Het opens your clarity audience. Hot opens your intuition. Hat opens your memory of past lives. And hut is put in activity the chakra of telepathy. That's the first thing that we had to do. In order to work with that Shoshana, with that seven letters, which are double. Double. Remember that. You can awake the chakras negatively or positively. It depends on your actions. If you rotate it Clockwise is positive. You rotate them counterclockwise is negative. Remember always those, the double aspect of those seven letters, which are around the Holy Trinity or the three primary letters of the Rossi Cross. And around the seven are the 12 simple sounds or letters of the Hebrew alphabet. And you find there, but of course, begin with the letter Hey. Hey, Vav, Zain, Het, Tet, Yod, Lamed, Nun, uh, Samech, Ajin, Sari, Cop, the last. So are the twelve. Twelve letters. And that is where we form the complete Shoshana. But through these twelve simple letters are coming in our channel the twelve zodiacal signs. If you go down to the bottom of the file that we put there, you find the 12 zodiacal signs in Judaism or in Kabbalah, how they are named. And the signs symbolize, and of course in the center, is the sun and the moon. So in other words, through our heart, through the 12 petals of the simple letters of the Shoshana, we channel the 12 zodiacal forces 
And this is how we are related to the universe. Through our own particular blood. So when we said, let us make Adam, we are addressing these archetypes which are related to Tifereth, the tree of life. Because in Tifereth, the tree of life is synthesized. All creation, all the lights which are beginning with the world of Bria. Because the world of Bria means creation. That relates to the ten sephiroth of Bria. The world of formation which relates to the ten sephiroth of the world of Yetzirah. And the ten sephiroth of the world of Asia which is our physicality that we explain because we have the Sephiroth in us too. So Bria, Yetzira, and Asia make 30 Sephiroth or 30 lights that we add the addition to the 42 and then we find the 72 names of God. That when we develop that in us, and then we understand that we developed all of the lights of the heart in us. And this is what is called, let us make Adam. Remember that. Let us make Adam is what the Bible says. In our image, after our likeness. Because the forces of Elohim are spread in all the universe. And this is how you explain the 72 names of God and the 42. So to be or to call yourself a human being to the image of God implies all of that the activity of all of that through Yesod, the ninth sphere. Because seven plus two is nine. And nine is the ninth sphere, Yesod, the sexual force with which we have to work in order to follow the Divine Mother and to let us make Adam in our image. So we have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fall of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. That's why the book of John, the Gospel of John, states, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by the word of God. We want to make Adam. Well, we have to use the word of God. And the word of God is light, is fire. Symbolized in the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Which are Israel, the archetypes within each one of us. And that we had to develop by putting into activity Tetis, the sea goddess. Do you have questions? The question is, I didn't mention the Talmud, which is another uh, book that uh, uh, Moses delivered, of course. The complete doctrine of Moses is written in three books. First, the Torah, which is a written Bible, the five books of Moses. Second, the Talmud, which is the soul 
of the doctrine in the Zohar, which is the spirit of the doctrine. So when we mention the mysteries of the Bible, we have to go into the Zohar and do the Talmud as well. But the Zohar is the one that relates to the spirit, to the higher forces hidden within the five books of Moses. And not only in the five books of Moses, the called the Torah, or the Tarot, the Tarot, but also the other scriptures, the Tanakh is also called. The Tanakh implies the five books of Moses in all the books of the prophets, of the Old Testament, as the Tanakh. Daniel, Joshua, Judges, the chant of Solomon, which we refer today, and of course, uh, by studying also the Talmud, you understand the meaning of this. But it's necessary to understand the tree of life and the Kabbalah, and not to fall into mistakes, because in this day and age, a lot of people, when they refer to Israel, they always put their mind in that country in the Middle East. And when we talk about Israel, we are not referring to that country at all. Because Israel is Kabbalistically a symbolic name related to Tifereth, to the soul. That brings into my mind what Master Samael on the or said before dying in 1977. He says, I probably will continue my mission through my twin soul. This is what he said. Twin soul. He didn't say twin body. There are a lot of people that appear there and physically saying, oh, I am the, the, this uh, soul that the master talks about, right, physically speaking. But the master never talk about physically. It's Kabbalistically. A soul is Tifereth or Geburah. There is no other way. Hmm? And then he says, is a young guy that has 18 years. You don't have to take that physically. Because he's talking about a soul. 18 is Kabbalistically occult enemies. And also refers to the three times six, meaning that this soul that probably will continue his mission has ego. Because the enemies of the Lord are 18. Six, six, six. Three times 18. Right? So therefore, he's talking about Tifereth. He's not talking about Malkut, even though that Tifereth expresses itself through Malkut. But if we want to interpret what the Master said, we have to read it Kabbalistically, not physically. People are, well, therefore, if, if the Master is going to continue in another body, this body has to, be, had to have, had to have uh, 18 years. And looking for a guy of 18 years old, it has nothing to do with it. It's, it's psychological, Kabbalistically. But Gnostics are, are, are lazy, and they don't read Kabbalistically. They read everything literally. For instance, Matthew Samael also said, one of his prophecies, oil will be discovered in the moon and Americans and Russians will fight for that. Oil of the moon. People say, oh well, uh, that is no, if the moon is no longer there, I mean, they don't even go into the moon. So how are they to uh, discover petroleum or oil in the moon? Well, it's a simple. The moon symbolizes Islam. And if you see Islam, the moon, full of oil, you understand what is happening right now. Everybody is fighting for that oil of Islam. But they want to read the word Islam, you know, uh, Muslims, right? In the moon, there is life. Do you want to discover that life of that moon? Go to Iraq, go to Iran, 
go to the Arabic world, whose symbol is the moon. And they have a lot of oil, which uh, people are fighting for it. Okay? That is the oil that the master talks about. I'm saying this because I find sometimes people that are arguing. They say, oh, that prophecy never was fulfilled. It, it was fulfilled a long time ago. Right? But they want to go on and rock it to the moon. Good uh, bon voyage. What about the Egyptian mummy? Like that? Well, well, that's another thing. Egyptian mummy. Remember the Egyptian darkness. And go there and study that. Because people don't understand that. and Take everything literally. That's the problem. Yes? Yes, of course. The sea goddess Tethys is the same symbol of the Divine Mother Kundalini. Remember that the Divine Mother has five aspects. The five leaves in the center of the rosy cross are those five aspects. That's why it's called Shoshana. If one wants to talk about the Divine Mother in the aspects, in his five aspects, she's also Shoshana. Because the physical body is Shoshana, Malkut. Tifereth, Israel, is Shoshana. In our heart, our soul. And the Divine Mother is also Shoshana, five aspects. All the archetypes of Israel in the physical body cannot crystallize, cannot develop if it wasn't for the Divine Mother, Tetis. Tet is the the nine letter, which means serpent. But the divine serpent Kundalini. Is. That's Tetis. Hmm? Not the Kundabafra. The Kundabafra is different. The tempting serpent of Eden is another thing. It's negative. But Tetis is positive. So it's one of those aspects of the divine mother that we have to work with. She will make us invulnerable. If we work with the waters of the river stink. Is that really? Styx. The river Styx, which are the fire of passion, sexual fire that we have. If we transmute it, we will become invulnerable, strong like Samson. And for that, we had to use the spear very, very well, the mastery, in order to kill all our enemies which are inside of us. Things, defect, errors, to become a strong Achilles. Yeah? Is there a metaphor in the three primary forces coming to manifest in us with the practice of art and painting? I would like to understand these energies in me via a practice that is familiar to me, for example. Just trying to understand the color. Well, the three primary forces related with painting, related with art, relate to the ray of Venus. Venus is one of the seven rays or the seven angels. The angel Anael is a positive ray of Venus. And the logos of, or the spirit of Venus is Uriel, one of the seven angels before the throne. So by concentrating ourselves into Uriel and the positive ray of Venus, which is Anael, then we enter into the world of art, whether we are musician, painting, etc., in order to develop positively. Because if you develop negatively, then you will go to the opposite. Remember the double. Remember the letters that are double. The double of Anael is Lilith. And then, if you are a musician, you will like to rap or to make a, a rock and roll. That's the negative aspect of art. It's completely Lilith, the negative aspect of Venus. But the positive is Anael, classical music. The great painters like Michelangelo, Raphael, but they are now negative. Many, many people are doing, they call it abstract art, which is just garbage. But that is related with the negative aspect of Venus, which is Lilith. Darkness, in other words, night. Lilith means night. So we have to polarize positively by working in the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness, 
because the three factors of the revolution of the consciousness relate to the three brains, to the three primary letters, the three mother letters. Aleph, to think positively. Shin, to feel positively. And Mem, to act positively. Not to fornicate in the three brains. And in words, speech, and action. By working in three, and whatever is our way, this is how we develop to the three primary forces, the three factors of the, of the revolution of the consciousness. Yeah? Well, Shoshana is in Hebrew, it's called lily. The lily or the rose. That's why uh, uh, that rose that we show there with all the letters is called the rosy cross. And when you find the 22 archetypes of the 22 letters, the 22 arcana of the tarot are related with it. And of course, you find uh, related to that uh, many things in the internet right now, a lot. But I advise you to read and study the book of the Master Samael on the Or, Tarot and Kabbalah, or Tarot and Alchemy. Those are the books that will put you in the right position to study uh, this uh, Rossi Cross. Because in order to understand the Rossi Cross, you have to memorize the 22 arcana. Every single arcanum is related with a letter. And that's why the Bible is written with those 22 letters. Don't forget about that. By knowing that, you understand the meaning of it. Otherwise, you are lost in stories and you make yourself a mess in your mind, not understanding the message of the Bible. Just the word Bereshith, which is the first word. We have talked about that word many times. In that word Bereshith, you find Berit which means circumcision. You find the word also Rashi, my head. Many other things. Do you have another question? Thank you very much. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing, available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Amen.